Hi, welcome back. In this video, I will discuss architecture of simplified instruction computer with extra equipment that is nothing but SIC XC. In the previous video, I have discussed the machine architecture of uh, SIC. So we will continue with the discussion uh, with respect to SIC XC in this case. The architecture of uh, SIC XC machine is uh, depends on the following features. The architecture of uh, SIC XC machine depends on the following uh, features. So we discuss these features uh, one by one in the next uh, slides. Coming back to the memory, uh, the memory of uh, SIC XC is uh, uh, 2 raised to 20 bytes in size. That is nothing but 1 MB. If you go with uh, SIC, the size of SIC is uh, 2 raised to 15 bytes in that case. Again, uh, uh, each three consecutive bytes uh, will represent one word as I said earlier with respect to SIC and one byte is nothing but 8 bits. These two are same uh, between SIC as well as SICXC, but uh, the size of memory is more in SICXC compared to SIC in this case. Now coming back to the next one that is uh, the resistors. In SIC we have only five resistors. Uh, they are A, A X, L, uh, PC and SW. But in this case we have uh, four more uh, resistors. Uh, one is uh, B, S, T and F here. Uh, I have already explained these particular resistors A, X, L, PC and uh, W, S, W. You just watch that particular uh, SIC machine architecture, you will get an idea about uh, all these particular resistors. Coming back to this particular B, B is uh, the base resistor. The number given to this particular B is uh, 3 in this case, uh, which is used for addressing uh, like uh, whether the instruction is uh, base relative addressing mode or uh, it is not a base relative addressing mode. If the value of B is equal to 1, we assume that it is a base relative addressing mode, otherwise it is not. Uh, S and T are uh, two uh, general purpose uh, resistors, uh, they do not have any special use. Uh, you, you can use these particular resistors for any general uh, operations or something like that. SICXC supports uh, the floating point number, so we have a uh, resistor to store that particular floating point number that is uh, F in this case. So floating point F is uh, used to store the floating point uh, numbers, it is also called as floating point accumulator in this case. The remaining resistors I have discussed in SIC, uh, just go through that particular video, you will understand the remaining resistors in this case. Now coming back to the instruction data formats first. So the data formats uh, are almost similar to SICXC uh, with respect to integers, uh, we have a 24 bit binary number. Negative numbers are stored with respect to uh, two's complement representation. Each character are stored using 8 bit ASCII codes. Up to here it is same. There is only one change with respect to SIC. SIC does not support floating point numbers, but SIC actually supports floating point number and the size of floating point number is 48 bit in this case. The format of uh, floating point number representation is something like this. The most uh, significant bit uh, defines whether the particular number is a negative number or the positive number. If this particular bit is equivalent to 0, uh, the meaning is it is a positive number. If it is equivalent to 1, it is negative number in that case. That is as simple as that. Now coming back to the next one. The next 11 bits uh, represent the exponent and the remaining 36 bits represent the fraction here. Now, if you want to know the floating point number, actual floating point number, uh, we have to use this particular equation. This is how actually it is represented in machine. And if you want to know the number, we have to use this equation. That is f, that is nothing but a fraction part multiplied by 2 raised to exponent minus 1024. So once you solve this equation, you will get a number based on this particular bit. If it is equal to 0, it is a negative positive number. If it is equal to 1, it is a negative number in that case. Uh, we will discuss the instruction formats in SICXC. There are uh, four instruction formats in this case. The first instruction format is uh, uh, one byte in size and it stores only the opcode. The example for this one is uh, R sub. It does not have any operands here. Uh, uh, that is, uh, it, it, it needs only eight bits to represent. Coming back to format two, the size of this particular format two is uh, two bytes. The first 8 bits are used to represent the opcode. 
the next four bits for uh, register one and next four bits for uh, register two in this case. Uh, for example, uh, we have an uh, instruction called as ADDR that is uh, register to register addition. S is the first uh, register here and T is the second register. So this instruction is represented with uh, format 2 in this case. Coming back to format 3, the size of format 3 is uh, 3 bytes. The first 6 bytes are used to represent opcode in this case. The next uh, 6 bits represent the kind of addressing mode and what type of uh, format is this that is uh, whether it is a format 3 or format 4 and the remaining 12 bits represent the displacement in this case. For example, if the value of uh, this bit that is uh, E is equal to 1 the meaning is uh, it is format 4 if the value of E is equal to 0 it will be format 3 in this case that is as simple as that. The remaining bits will represent uh, whether it is uh, the indirect addressing mode that is N is equal to 1 indirect addressing mode 0 normal addressing mode. If the value of i is equal to 1, immediate addressing mode. If it is 0, it is not immediate addressing mode. If the value of x is equal to 1, indexed addressing mode. 0, it is not an indexed addressing mode. If the value of b is equal to 1, it is a base relative addressing mode. If p is equal to 1, it is program counter relative addressing mode. Back to the fourth uh, format, there is only one change that is uh, after this particular flags we have 20 bits for address in the previous case we were having only 12 bits in this case we have 20 bits in this case so that's the only difference in this case and uh, these instructions are represented with plus over here so that we can easily understand whether it is format 3 and format 2 but uh, machine will understand based on this particular thing whether the value of e is equal to 1 or 0 if it is 0 it is format 3 if it is 1 it is format 4 in this case now coming back to the addressing modes, uh, the addressing modes are um, uh, defined with the help of this particular uh, flag bits. So we will try to discuss uh, some of the addressing modes, it is not possible to discuss everything and the combinations we can take uh, anyhow at the later stage. If the value of uh, n is equal to 1 and i is equal to 1, it is neither immediate nor indirect addressing mode. If it is n is equal to 1 and i is equal to 0, it is indirect addressing mode. If n is equal to 0 and i is equal to 1, it is immediate addressing mode. If both of them are 1, it is neither immediate nor indirect addressing mode. Now we will talk about b. If b is equal to 1, it is base relative uh, addressing mode. If the value of uh, p is equal to 1, it will become program counter relative addressing mode. So that, that is what we can see here. b and p cannot be 1 at any moment of time. Uh, either b will be 1 or p will be 1 uh, at a particular point of time. Coming back to direct, uh, if n and uh, i is equal to 1, that is it is neither immediate nor uh, indirect addressing mode, b is 0, p is 0 as well as uh, uh, maybe uh, x may be 1 or 0, that is a different issue. If b, these two are 0, 0, it is a direct addressing mode in this case. As I said earlier, if i is equal to 1, it is uh, immediate addressing mode. Whenever uh, we talk about uh, immediate addressing mode, the value of x should be equal to 0. Similarly, in uh, whenever uh, n is equal to 1, it is indirect addressing mode, the value of x should be equal to 0 in this case. Uh, the value of n and i may be 0 or 1, but the value of x is equal to 1. If that is the case, it is called as indexed addressing mode. That is, the value of x should be 1. We do not care about the value of i. It may be 0 or it may be 1. We do not care about the value of n. It may be 0 or 1. In such case, it is called as index addressing mode. As I said earlier, if the value of uh, e is equal to 1, it is format 4. If the value of e is equal to 0, it is format 3 in this case. These are the following uh, instruction uh, are supported in SICXE along with uh, what we have with respect to SIC machine over here. Uh, we have LDA, LDX, STA, STX in uh, uh, SIC. Along with that, we have two more uh, instructions like uh, LDB that is load B and store B in this case. Along with the normal arithmetic operators operations, it supports uh, floating point uh, arithmetic operations also. We have something called as uh, COMP as well as uh, COMPR that is compare the values of two resistors in this case. Uh, next, we have something called as uh, conditional uh, jump instructions as usual with respect to the SIC. We have J sub and R sub instructions with respect to SIC whatever we have the same thing is present here. Uh, 
we have one more instructions in this case that is called as RMO that is uh, uh, register move instruction move a value from one register to other register we have register to register uh, of arithmetic operations that is add r sub r mul r and div r in this case finally the io operations again we have something called as the td we will check the value of this particular td based on that we will see whether the input device is ready to uh, read and write or here input output devices are ready to read and write in that case based on the value of uh, td we will do that particular input output operations in this case and uh, every time we, we can transfer one byte uh, maximum not more than one byte in this case so in this video i have discussed uh, uh, the sic xc machine architecture uh, if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching